fourth question I have, right? We're on number four, right? Four, right? We're going on number four. The fourth question that I have is, you're not from around here. You're not familiar with the nuances and the personalities. How are you going to go about implementing change? Uh, the smaller the business, the more important it is to, to pay attention to this uh, on a holistic level, right? And so I think that the people that uh, make the best fit over the long run are the people who come in with an air of humility about them, right? I don't, I, I may have what I think is a, a level of expertise, a level of understanding, but it wasn't developed in this organization. And so let me come in and step into this organization. Let me learn what's good about it. Let me learn what's good about these coworkers that I have and the systems that we're involved in and, and the business that we're doing. And then if I, if I take that approach, I'll probably be able to see areas where we can do better, we can change things and whatnot. But over time, I will, from taking a vantage point of, let me find the good here first. And let me not change anything until I understand what what all the dynamics are. Uh, then you know I'll have a, a much better time of, of of getting people to cooperate with me when I can explain why a certain change is going to be healthy for the organization. And if they're a salesperson, they have to gather intel and evidence to be able to sell the staff on, hey, this is this change that we're going to make is going to be a good thing. You may not be in sales collecting dollars, but you're in sales being able to gather ideas and get people to work together around those ideas. So, you know, this question is going to give you an insight to that person that's maybe new coming into your organization, whether or not they're going to be too aggressive, or if they're going to have that humble approach and they're going to have a more of a holistic uh, way of going about developing intel to figure out how is it that I go about getting everybody to on this same page to implement your vision and what I think are the best steps and action steps to, to carry out that vision. Yeah, and, and a lot of it has to do with how you set that person up and the expectations, right? That's why this is an interview yeah. process. You're trying to set those act expectations on before they get anywhere near into your business. Yeah, so as the hiring person and the owner of the business, I, I'm gonna make it very clear I don't want you to come in here like a wrecking ball in the first 90 days. I want you to come in here, I want you to get to know Sally and John and Mike, and I want you to get to understand our systems and who our vendors are, and, you know, and, and when you start feeling like there's a better way, maybe we should interface a little bit and, and let me fill you in on some of the things that you, you, know, you haven't caught on to yet about our culture before we just go in and start. And, and, and the staff's gonna be, if you do allow that person in, they're gonna be on, they're gonna be like, oh, who's this leader coming in? What, why are they, what are they trying to do? Maybe I need to buddy up and try to, you know, give them a bunch of stuff to, you know, build some camaraderie and then, you know, when it comes back down five months from now, you know, you got my back, right? You, you, you got there's a lot of little nuances that go on in businesses that you are already familiar with and you're trying to, establish a culture here where change is going to be inputted or implemented in a seamless fashion. I know that's kind of an oxymoron. Change is not seamless. Change is not seamless, but why are you changing? Are you changing for the sake of change or do you have a greater goal and this change is going to take you there? You know, if, if, if people around you understand the goal, you understand where we're going, uh, they have the opportunity to get off the bus if they don't Correct. like that. Right. There's a very good book called Good to Great by Jim Collins. It's sometimes you gotta get the wrong people off of the bus. Yeah. And there's another great quote by Frederick Douglass, which is, it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. <laughs> and the same is true for business. Yeah. If you're able to set your business off on the forefront before things get started, which you're probably already two, five, 10, 20 years into this, you know, you, you got a bigger uphill battle, but if you're able to turn things around, it's going to make your business more marketable and sellable, and you're probably going to be able to collect more money for yourself in your own pocket. Yeah, you know, the most enjoyable business to run is the one that's ready to sell today, Every, you know, because it's, it's delivering you uh, a, a satisfaction level. You've got things in place that are managing themselves. You've got people taking care of things. You've got some level of free time component to your world. Um, the division of responsibility is, is such that it's not all on you.
talked about owner concentration in, earlier. Um, and so if you can do all those things to make your business marketable and, and very appealing to a buyer at this moment, it's going to be a joy to run. And, oh, and that's going to invigorate not just you as the leader, but your staff. Everybody's going to jump on board that bus. If you're if you're happy, chances are your staff will be happy, and you'll be able to hand out maybe bonuses and cash incentives on the spot. Everybody gets excited about cash when they get it. <laughs> Press the subscribe button to stay updated with the latest.